Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about the four different kinds of hypersensitivities. So first, what is a hypersensitivity? Well, a hypersensitivity is an, an undesirable or an actually harmful reaction of a person's immune system. Sometimes also called an intolerance. Um, specifically when we're talking about sort of more undesirable things rather than harmful things, but, but an intolerance can be used to discuss all of them. So now let's talk about those four different types, starting with type 1. Type 1 hypersensitivities are when a specific antibody, specifically IgE, recognizes soluble antigen. Remember here that Ig stands for immunoglobulin, which is another name for antibody. IgE is one of the major types of antibodies. So IgE recognizes soluble antigen. What does this mean? Antigen is just the thing being recognized by the immune system. In this case, it is something soluble. So it's not something that is cellular um, or at the tissue level. It's recognizing um, just something that's kind of dissolved and floating around in the body. In particular, with type 1 hypersensitivities, IgE is recognizing things like pet dander, mold, pollen, um, things like that that we think of as being related to seasonal allergies. And so IgE binds to that soluble antigen when it finds it. This triggers an immune system cell called mast cells to do something called to, to degranulate. So the mast cells degranulate. And all that means is they basically um, just spill out their guts. These mast cells are full of um, sort of signaling compounds that are then just released into the body. And the major one here that we're concerned with is something called histamine. You might recognize that word because it is antihistamines that we take when we want to relieve allergy symptoms. And that's because histamine release causes the allergy symptoms that we associate with a lot of these seasonal allergies or pet allergies. So I'm talking about coughing, sneezing, red eyes, watery eyes, hives. Those are all being caused by this massive histamine release in the body and antihistamines can help to control those symptoms. So that is type one hypersensitivities. Now let's talk about type two. Type two is also mediated by antibodies, but by different kinds of antibodies. Rather than IgE, the antibodies that are in these type two hypersensitivities are IgG and IgM. And they recognize, rather than the soluble antigen, stuff just happening to be floating through the, the body, they're recognizing cellular antigens. So antigens that are actually on the surface of the host's cells. And what this does is when these antibodies recognize and bind to cellular antigens, they're essentially binding to cells and causing a lot of damage to those cells. This can be termed cyto, cyto for cell, toxicity. So cytotoxicity is when cells are being damaged. Some examples of type 2 hypersensitivities are the recognition of certain self-antigens. Self-antigens means something that is self, something that belongs to the host that is not a foreign entity. Uh, and this results in conditions known as autoimmune disorders or autoimmunity. So some of these type 2 hypersensitivities, where you have IgG and IgM recognizing these cellular antigens and causing damage to the cells, um, this can be sort of self cells. Uh, and it can also, um, in particular, be red blood cells. So the ABO groups, if you've heard of like type A, type B, type O, type AB, that has to do with carbohydrates that are on the surface of red blood cells. Um, and also, if you've heard about being like A positive or um, O negative, that, that positive and that negative is referring to Rh antigens, which are also just carbohydrates that are um, stuck onto red blood cells. And so what can actually happen here is um, if the immune system, if these antibodies 
recognize um, either the ABO or the RH antigens on red blood cells as being foreign. They start to attack red blood cells. And this is what can be dangerous with blood transfusions. Um, so hemolytic blood transfusions, when someone gets a transfusion of blood that is not sort of compatible with their blood type, that is because these antibodies are attacking these red blood cells that are being put into the body from a foreign source that aren't compatible. Um, also, you may have heard of hemolytic disease of the newborn. This is when um, a mother's immune system actually starts to attack the baby's blood when, when the baby is um, sort of still in, in utero or just afterwards um, because of this sort of incompatibility where the mom's antibodies start to attack the um, attack on recognizing the baby's uh, different antigens. Now let's talk about type 3 hypersensitivities. Type 3 hypersensitivities are specifically characterized by these things called immune complexes. Immune complexes are when you have aggregations of antibody and soluble antigen. So not just one antibody recognizing one soluble antigen, but multiple antibodies recognizing more than one soluble antigen at a time, binding to more than one at a time, um, and, and then those same soluble antigens will be bound by other antibodies, and you just get this large mass of all of these soluble antigens that are being recognized by all of these antibodies at once, and that's called an immune complex. And the immune complex will deposit into blood vessel walls, and once it's deposited into the blood vessel walls, it causes a couple of things to happen. First of all, it causes complement cascades. Complement are types of proteins that are part of the immune system that cause this cascade where all these complement proteins are activating other complement proteins and they uh, eventually lead to something called the membrane attack complex where they form a hole in a cell and bust it open and kill it. Um, and when this is happening, this is happening in the body to host cells um, rather than to pathogens. Um, when complement cascades result in the death of pathogens, that's a good thing. When they result in the death of host cells, like in type 3 hypersensitivities, that's a bad thing. Something else that happens when these immune complexes deposit into blood vessel walls is neutrophil degranulation. We had previously mentioned in type 1 hypersensitivities with mast cells degranulating, that that means they just spill forth um, and sort of secrete all of their... Um, all of these components that are held inside the cells. And for neutrophils, this means a lot of sort of cytotoxic enzymes, a lot of enzymes that are meant to degrade and break down things. And so when complement starts to have its cascade and neutrophils degranulate, there's all of this sort of damage that's being done. And this results in widespread inflammation in the body. So lots of inflammation, lots of tissue damage. An example of this is the autoimmune disorder lupus, which you might have heard of before. And lupus is where antibodies bind either to self DNA or to self proteins. Remember when we have self uh, antigens being recognized by antibodies, we call that autoimmunity. So this is a, another place where autoimmune disorders happen, um, specifically being caused by these immune complexes uh, and, and causing the sort of systemic diseases like lupus. Now let's move on to the final type of hypersensitivity, type 4. Type 4 is different than the first three types, in particular because it is cell-mediated. It is actually regulated by T cells. So whereas types 1 and 2 and 3 all involved antibodies doing something that was going to harm the host, type 4 it's about T cells doing something wrong. So the T cells can be Th1 or Th2 cells through different kinds of T helper cells. It can also be um, cytotoxic lymphocytes, which is a different kind of T cell. But either way, it's considered cell mediated rather than antibody mediated. And it's also known as a delayed type of hypersensitivity. So delayed hypersensitivity. And all this means is that the T cells, um, they start to attack something um, that otherwise shouldn't be harmful. 
in order to get it out of the body. This results in things like latex allergies, uh, poison ivy, the, the rash, the dermatitis that you get from um, contact with poison ivy, and also transplant rejection. So if you hear about someone who maybe got a lung transplant and then their body rejected it, that is because of a type four hypersensitivity where the T cells recognized um, either the latex or the poison ivy or the, the lung transplant, one of these things, and said, hey, that shouldn't be here. And they have this really strong sort of overreaction to eliminate what they view as a threat. And it um, results in either sort of an allergy or a rash or at worst, a major rejection of a needed uh, organ transplant. And known as a delayed hypersensitivity because it can take several days sometimes for these things to um, for the symptoms to appear. So several days following following explosion, um, exposure in some cases. And so that is sort of it for the four types of hypersensitivity. I have another video specifically on, uh, on antibody, on antibody structure and function. And so if you're interested in learning more about some of these antibodies, what they look like, what they do, then please check out that video. And thanks for watching Biology Professor.